So as a student filmmaker, my films have always been light. I've always delved into topics that I'm interested in. So it meant that my body of work was usually characterized as cute, or it could be dismissed as you know an aesthetic kind of work. So for this film, my directing film, Bawat Palapag Isang Sandali, I wanted to experiment with the drama genre. So it can be seen as you know an experimentation because it's my first time really trying to manipulate a serious genre per se. So with my film, I really wanted to explore cinematography as an avenue to really um, push the narrative forward. Uh, I, do, I didn't want to use dialogue as my main vehicle for that because I really believe that film should be first and foremost visual in its character. So with, with regards to my topic or my story, I wanted to showcase how I hated condos. It's literally just that. Because from my room, I can see the horizon quite, um, quite readily every day when I look out. But then in recent years, SM has built their condo there. So it, it really blocks the view. So with really that small singular thought in mind, it germinated, I, I, I took that thought and I made it into a narrative, a short film. And so, so my film is about a pool boy who falls in love with the tenant of the penthouse. They never see each other on level ground. It's always one is looking up or one is looking down. So the story really follows the pool boy in his quest to venture up the condominium to try to be on common ground with the tenant. But in the end, they never really meet. So it's a statement that I wanted to express because a lot of people my age, we grew up really looking up to the lifestyle that these uh, condominiums bring. And I'm not one of them. I really, I really detest that kind of compartmentalized, that boxed sort of kind of living. And so that really manifests in my film because I only utilized wide shots. And so my rationale for that is to kind of, I wanted the viewer to be somewhat alienated from what was happening inside of my milieu. I wanted the viewer to become quite literally just a viewer. It's kind of, uh, uh, how do I say it? It's kind of like a viewer in a sense that they're only, they're only there to witness what is happening and they will never be able to step into the shoes of my characters. I wanted my characters to be somewhat untouchable, cold, and detached from the viewer. I didn't want any emotions or sentiments to be really imparted actually with my film. So in essence, it's actually quite uh, a detached, a cold film. I really didn't want to make people relate to it. I just wanted them to see it. And I think I could, uh, that's also justified by my uses of high and low angles because I just wanted them to be detached from my characters. So the process of making this film, uh, it was really personal. We were urged to really take it apart by sequence and to really create relevant actions and reactions. So it was only then that I was able to, you know, really share and really get to collaborate with other people. Because personally, I'm, I'm really, uh, I guess you could say that I am, how do I say this? I guess you could say that I am very personal when it comes to films. I really don't want other people taking part in the creative process. It's kind of a, it's a selfish act on my behalf, but that's how I work best so far. But with regards to production, it was then that I was able to, um, it was then that I was able to collaborate with my crew members mainly with my cinematographer and my production designer with regards to blocking and placement of um, components of the shot. In place of dialogue, I really utilized space with regards to trying to push my narrative. So in my film, you could see 
the space the spaces I used were the pool area, the elevator area, most specifically, as well as the penthouse. And so that kind of like levels out the location, the geography of my film. We have the pool where Van, our pool boy, strictly resides. The penthouse where the tenant strictly resides as well. So they only get to meet in the elevator. It's kind of like their common ground. But even then, even though they get to meet in the elevator, it's always a matter of passing each other by. They never really get to stay on one level for an extended period of time. And so that's the kind of pros that I wanted to uh, that I wanted to convey. I wanted to I wanted I wanted to convey in images uh, the emotion of longing and um, not being able to get what you want. So with regards to that, uh, I also utilized sound or the lack of it to be able to emphasize like the lack of life per se that you have in condominium spaces. So like I said, it was that kind of lifestyle is compartmentalized, it's standardized. So it's kind of it kind of lacks personality. It lacks, you know, warmth. And so with a lack of sound, with a lack of ambient noise that conveys other people really other people around you, surrounding you and interacting with each other, I wanted to convey that in this structure, this institution, you're mostly alone, really. But you think you're you think you're having a good time, you think you're interacting, socializing with other people who live there with you, but it's a lifestyle that was actually given to you. It was a lifestyle that was marketed to you, and it lacks life, it lacks personality and depth. So I guess that was one of the ways that I manipulated sound as well. But I also utilized some soundtracks to be able to highlight certain scenes. Uh, I, I used some two, two songs from Megumi Accorda, who she so graciously uh, lent her tracks to me. Um, moreover, uh, with the lack of dialogue, I also wanted it to be a statement of sorts that you can be able to make a film without it. That it's not as important. Well, while dialogue is important, you have your image first. It comes first and foremost. And if you are able to manipulate your image well, then you'll also be able to convey what you want without really having your characters speak it. So, yeah, I guess with my film, Bawat Palabag Isang Sandali, I could relatively say that I succeeded in trying to convey to my viewers my worldview as well as my emotional sentiments, however brief they may be. Filmmaking is really a collaborative effort and one of my biggest challenges in making this film was choosing not to reach out to my crew. And so I've learned that it's really important from the very beginning to be open to the people who are collaborating with you because they will be able to provide insights, recommendations, suggestions that will cr contribute to the output to your film. Uh, my biggest challenge uh, production-wise was being able to communicate to my actors how, how to act, essentially, without the use of words. Because when I directed my actors, I only I specified that they should use their facial expression more, even more so than the usual because that's the only thing that the viewers will be able to observe. And so I guess more, I, that really roots from collaboration, I guess. It's, it's under the same umbrella that I have to be open with everyone, even my actors, my crew, because they will be able to provide you um, advice. They will, be, they will be able to provide you precautions when it comes to actually shooting your film and even writing your script. So on the spot, actually, when we were shooting this, my actors came to me and they, became, and they suggested some lines, some facial expressions, some gestures that I would be able to incorporate. And of course, this was important to me because all my shots were wide. And the, these gestures, even though they were so small, they could really contribute 
to how the message was being delivered. And so at first, I was very resistant to that because I was so uh, set with my ways. Everything was ironed out. But then I realized in the long run, in the help, with the help of also my crew members, that their input is actually it's quite significant. And so after that process, after that whole production, I became more open to criticism. I became more open to, um, to collaborations, to suggestions, and even for, to revisions as well. So actually filmmaking is such, a, such an eye-opening process. It's a, it's, a social, it's a social event. You really get to hone your skills, um, not just technically, but also socially. Because it, it really humbles you. And so uh, that was actually my biggest challenge. But in the end, it also taught me the most significant lesson I've learned. I think it's really important to work with what you know first, as opposed to trying to step out of the box and really capture socially relevant or other interesting subjects or topics. Of course, it's noble, it's admirable. But if you're starting out, you should first start with what you know. Because at least then you have the elbow room to create mistakes. I mean, not, not to create mistakes, but to make mistakes and to learn from them. Um, it's, really, it's really significant for us to really be humbled first with our own talents, our own skills, our own knowledge before we step out into the world and really create things that other people should see. So that, I guess, is my general advice for young filmmakers who want to study filmmaking or just want to indulge in the craft. But don't be afraid to spend a few years, a few months, just dabbling with what you're interested in. But of course, it's important to grow out of that and to be able to create works that more people can appreciate and more people can learn and understand things from. Eh, di ba nagamit mo yung leave mo? Eh, paano yan? Next week, di ba manganganak din yung asawa mo? Puro ka na lang, abs eh. for the maintenance. It doesn't go up to the penthouse.
Ivan. Pinapalinis ni Ma'am Gigi yung lang siyang infinity pool para bukas. Sige, sige. Sige, patawal na dami na to. Design mo. Van, simula bukas, palitan mo si janitorial si Ronnie. Naglowa na eh. Patulong ka naman ka na toilet. Morning din po. Naiwan niya po yata. Ay, uh, sige po, palagay na lang po sa likod. Salamat. Uh, Ma'am, ano po pala pangalan? Ay, pangal Kuya, 
Ito po, pasensya na po ah. Sige, salamat.